All right, hello. I'm going to show you how I can use the clock glitching module uh, in the Chip Whisper device, which is right now extremely experimental, um, but I just wanted to show you some early results. So the clock glitching module lets us um, insert glitches into a clock. The clock itself is uh, can be taken from a device under test or you know a board that you're working with. So normally you have a clock like this, and this is all configurable. Um, and for example, here I'm getting a clock from a crystal oscillator, pass it through the clock module, and pass it back to the device I'm testing. Uh, so let me just enable the clock module to continuously output this glitch clock. So you can see how we have a um, this glitch inserted into the clock, and you can adjust the width and the location of that glitch. Um, in coarse and fine ways. You can see actually up here in this terminal window the the device under test is going crazy right now. So let me just disable that. Um, so the code the device under test is running, it's just some AVR code and it outputs hello when it resets and then jumps to this glitch one function. In this glitch one function it has an infinite loop here. This infinite loop is checking the state of a variable. Um, this variable is declared volatile which is critical so it's not optimized away. This is an example when you are checking a variable you know, inside a interrupt loop or something like that. This is just the most basic example I could come up with. Um, and presumably the system will output hello and A and just stop. If it exits that loop, it would then output one, two, three, four. Um, there's a bunch more while loops and then it would return and these are just while ones. So they, it should never return after this. And let's see what happens when we glitch it. So I can use the built-in programmer, program that code in, um, and we get the hello A. So I can reset the device just by reading the signature, which is part of the, um, as part of the programming, we'll, we'll reset it. So I'm just going to stop the logic analyzer. Um, otherwise, the computer slows down here when I'm recording. And I'll show you the physical hardware, just so you have an idea what's going on. So what we've got here is, I'm just using the AVR um, on the multi-target board, so you don't have to use this board, you could use any any AVR board, this is just convenient. Um, it has the crystal oscillator up here, so this crystal oscillator is being fed into the FPGA. The FPGA is then adding glitches to that clock. Alternatively, you can just get the FPGA to give you a clock, you don't have to take it from outside. Um, but that's something that's not configurable right now, so that will eventually be supported. And I then feed that clock back into the, um, the AVR. I mean, also monitoring it on the logic analyzer you saw there. All right, so we have that system, and all I'm going to do is in the Chip Whisperer Capture, I've just played around with a bunch of settings to have ones that give me sort of good results. Um, and when I hit this manual trigger button, it just outputs glitches onto the clock. So it's always opening the clock, and then it, for 200 cycles, it'll output a glitched clock. And we just sort of, so we can see here it's just reset. Um, so presumably it's just skipped so many instructions that it reset the whole system. So I just reset it again, and let's try again. So I'm just going to keep hitting this manual trigger button. And, oh, I was too quick there, but you can see, hey, A1234, what's happened is it's broke out of that loop um, because of the clock glitches, and it started executing this code right here. And then I hit glitch again, and I reset it. So let's, let's keep going. Um, so you can sometimes get some really weird results. A lot of the time, it's just resetting. This is something that, you know... The easiest thing to do would be to have a script. There we get the two, three, four. So it skipped even printing the one, and then it's executed this other code branch. So you can see how clock glitching is a pretty interesting way to um, to start executing code in either the wrong order or um, break out of loops. I'm gonna see here. Occasionally, even you'll see it jump to uh, to code that it shouldn't execute at all. So let me just keep hitting. There's that a one, two, three, four. It's breaking out. Um, uh, oh, here we go. So this A, this F off, where did that come from? Well, where that came from is that there's actually, there's other test modules in this code. They're not called at all right now, but they're in the file because, you know, I was testing some password stuff. Um, and one of them has this check here. So what's actually happened, you realize, is 
inside this glitch one module, this is where it was just spinning. Um, and it's either skip so many instructions or it's tried to do a return wrong or something like that but it's actually ended up all the way over here and printed this so the clock glitching is way way more than just you know oh, break this one loop out yeah you can it start inserting all sorts of fault into your test system uh, so this whole uh, project you know it's really designed that if you're designing these embedded systems you really need to be aware of uh, the ability of clock glitches to induce all sorts of faults in your system. So you can't just assume that code will always be executing in a perfectly linear fashion. Um, and this is on a Mega 328P, so it's a new processor. It's still, you know, a valid processor. Um, but these little clock glitches will screw up your whole embedded system. So thanks for watching.